The most important thing that Halo Infinite needs to absolutely nail is the campaign. Now why is that? Well stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now it's no surprise that launch day of a game is one of the most important days for a franchise, but I feel like for Halo Infinite, its launch is a little bit more pressured than it normally is for most games out there, as it has been six years since the last Halo title, and a lot of people have a lot riding on the launch of this game. Though there has been a lot of negative press coverage about Halo Infinite, as it does generally get more clicks and views than positive news. What is the number one way for Halo Infinite to have a positive reception at launch for this game? Now based on community feedback as from you guys on this channel, as well as various reviews in previous Halo titles, it puts a really big emphasis on campaign gameplay. So after reading up on some of the Metacritic reviews, some of the IGN reviews, watching some of their videos and your feedback from the community, it seems like a general consensus is that campaign is the most important thing to get down. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why. So if you guys like these analytics kind of videos make sure you tap that like button let me know you want to see some more content like this if you want to stay updated with everything going on with halo as we ramp up to the release of halo infinite well, make sure you tap subscribe let's get right into the content here so like i mentioned at the top of this video we all have a very big concern about how halo infinite is going to launch so i typed up a nice little poll for you guys on the community page here Talking about with E3 next month, what do you care about most? And 68% of you with 9.4 thousand votes, 68% of you said campaign. So the overwhelming majority of you guys wanted to see campaign over multiplayer, which is actually rather surprising. Obviously, you know, this is just my channel, about 20 th some odd thousand subscribers. Not exactly a full representation of the community, but it does seem very interesting how campaign is so heavily favored when it comes to this information about what you guys want to know about Halo Infinite and what's going to kind of sell you on the game, because that's the point of E3, right, is to sell you on these games. So it made me want to dive in a little deeper into how important is campaign for ratings and probably news general media when it comes to how the reception of Halo Infinite is going to be. And looking at previous games in the franchise, kind of surprising how some of the ratings have been and how it seems like gaming media seems to really favor campaign when it comes to their ratings compared to multiplayer. So I want to show you guys some of the ratings of previous Halo games and you can kind of see a general trend of what I'm talking about here. So first I say let's go to the gold standard of what a Halo game is in my opinion and that's Halo 3 and IGN, which I know IGN can be a bit of a meme nowadays, gave this a 9.5 rating which seems honestly rather fair. This was also released back in September of 2007 where iGEM was basically the only main news outlet for gaming. Metacritic also rated this a 94, so a must play rating right there with a user rating of 8.1 actually, which is rather surprising. Though to me, a really big surprise right here is Halo 4 actually got rated a 9.8 by IGN, so technically this game, according to IGN, is better than Halo 3, which I know a lot of people within the Halo community would probably widely say Halo 4 might be the worst Halo game within the franchise and kind of started, really started this downward trend for the franchise as a whole. Though when you look on the Metacritic side of things, it got an 87, which is honestly like a pretty solid score, to be honest, with a user rating of 7.1 as well. So you can kind of see how like the official critics and how the users are rating this game. 7.1, yeah, it's not that great, but certainly could be worse. For 87, like, that's a solid score. I would be happy with that if Halo Infinite gets this kind of score. I figured we also go check out the most controversial kind of Halo, which I'm sure nowadays is widely held as one of the better ones out there, is Halo Reach. When this game released, it was very divisive where a lot of people liked the game, a lot of people didn't like the game. IGN gave it a 9.5, and Metacritic gave it a 91 out of 100, and also with the user ratings of 8.4, so solid ratings right there. I must play according to one of the most standardized rating systems, like games honestly get bonuses based on Metacritic score, so it's super important that these games get very well rated. Again, Reach had a really great campaign, honestly one of the best gameplay campaigns in Halo's franchise, in my opinion. Multiplayer certainly has its issues, but I definitely have my fun with it as well. 
Title update is much better than vanilla, but this is the vanilla rating and it got a 91. And in my honest opinion, I feel like this game did start the downward trend of popularity with Halo as the rise of Call of Duty was happening, but Halo 4 kind of put the nail in the coffin. Now Halo 5 on this point, you can kind of see where I'm getting at, where now this game was rated a 9. This is the lowest rating out of the last four major Halo games that have been released that are like full-fledged Halo games. I'm not counting ODST because that's more of a side game. Where with the Metacritic for Halo 5, got an 84. So a bit lower on the lower side of things. That's something you'd kind of like to see that bumped up a little bit more. And also with a user rating of 6.4 as well. Also remember that this is rated off of the launch of Halo 5 as well, which obviously Halo 5 did not really release with the full mile content you'd expect in a Halo game, like no BTB, no Forge. Watching the IGN review from back from 2012, I went through and watched the whole thing. This is a eight minute long video essentially. And you'd think that what the part they talk about multiplayer and campaign, you think they kind of talk about it evenly. In this review, they actually only spend 50 seconds talking about multiplayer in an eight minute review of Halo 4, which obviously the multiplayer is made to kind of maintain the player base and keep people coming back. So I feel like this kind of showcases the priorities that reviewers and the gaming media as a whole has when it comes to a Halo game. They put a bigger emphasis on the casual side of things like playing the campaign and the multiplayer is really more for the older, more dedicated fans, which obviously us in the Halo community certainly are, but these people who are making the decisions of whether or not this game is good for the general public to understand you know like i said metacritic is a very important reviewer for you know games developers to get bonuses and get a true understanding of whether or not a good game is actually good now when it comes to the comparisons of halo 4 and 5 obviously there are some parts where it feels like it flip flops where the campaign in halo 4 is actually really good multiplayer not so great where in halo 5 the campaign not so great but the multiplayer is actually probably one of the better ones in my opinion and the features within halo 5 now are amazing you got custom game browser you have the best forge that's ever been created within the halo franchise you have an awesome theater mode as well even though it can be a little janky it still works rather well where halo 4 suffered on the performance side of things i remember a lot of frame drops back in the 360 days Forge was very bare bones and not as well developed as Halo Reach's Forge was. So I would honestly say that by part I feel like most people would agree with me that Halo 5's multiplayer side of things and community based features are way better than Halo 4, but yet Halo 4 has been overall received better than Halo 5 and I believe that is mainly because of the campaign side of things. One gamer review I think gets a really bad shake is the IGN review and the Metacritic review for Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4 multiplayer is one of the best shooters I've ever played in my entire life, once everything was fixed and working obviously after the launch. But we know that it comes with a multiplayer and a campaign, a very robust multiplayer. And the reviews that we have read and I've looked over that they really kind of just say like, oh, the multiplayer is this, and they have their own opinions and things like that. And obviously like the campaign for Battlefield generally isn't very good. And that definitely comes through within Battlefield 4 as well. But the thing is, is that the rating that they gave Battlefield 4 on PC, they gave it an 8.5, which is the optimal platform to play Battlefield 4. It's one of the greatest multiplayer shooters of all time. And they gave it an 8.5. And here on Metacritic, they gave it an 85. Now I'm sure the launch of Battlefield 4 certainly hurt its overall rating because it was pretty broken at launch, but an 85 for this game, I feel like it's pretty tough because the multiplayer experience for Battlefield is like the core experience and you really only do the campaign just because it's something else to have. Now the IGN love child of Call of Duty for Black Ops 4 got an 8.5, which is kind of harsh on the IGN side of things, but they mainly cited within their video about how there is no campaign. And I watched the review video and they kind of were just very vague and white swiping when it comes to their reviews of the multiplayer. And you don't really get a sense of the intricacies that are in that game. Same thing with Metacritic as well. It gave it an 83. I think that's mainly just because there was no campaign. I thought the multiplayer for Black Ops 4 was fun and pretty well played. I mean, Blackout was a ton of fun as well, but uh, they gave it an 83. The lack of a campaign seemed to really hurt the overall reviews and experiences of expected experiences for the franchise. So I'm judging what the community on the channel here has suggested, judging from what reviewers have said like IGN and Metacritic, where it seems like they really put a bigger emphasis on the campaign experience 
and how that feels judging on how good the game is as a whole. So campaign still really matters. So I feel like this kind of begs the question, why do reviewers seem to favor campaigns when it comes to their overall reviews of video games? Because many games out there have different purposes out there. Like I said, Battlefield is very much for the multiplayer experience. That's what it's really made for. Halo, on the other hand, does multiplayer and campaign. Same thing with like Call of Duty, but you can see how the ratings will vary so much depending a lot on the campaign campaign and not really so much on the multiplayer side of things and the main reason why that is is because a lot of these reviewers out there are not able to sync the time that is necessary to truly understand the multiplayer aspect of a game. They pretty much just compare and contrast what was in the previous game, how's it play now, if there's anything broken or the general consensus of the overall community, if things are mixed, then they just kind of go, eh, it's really there and they can't really dive too much into it because like much with like was with Halo 5 was that you can't really judge the multiplayer within like a 20 hour play session or one day, you kind of stick with it, you know, one month later, two months later, that's when you really start to see like true metas build and see how the game actually plays out. But when you really only have one night to put out a new review, maybe a week if you get an early copy, if you're a dedicated, well-known reviewer out there, but even then you're playing against people who are not exactly, who represent the general masses as well. So it's very difficult to judge a multiplayer when it comes to ratings. So that's why campaign gets a lot of emphasis on whether or not a game is good or not or gets a high rating to Metacritic and also IGN. But now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I'll just play the game myself, come up with my own opinion, and then just live on with my life, which is honestly the best way you really should go about doing these kind of games. But the thing is that these major news outlets, especially like IGN and other news outlets out there, they really do control the narrative of how a game is well received or not. For example, like Cyberpunk, the whole issue about the lower end console side of things like the PS4 and the Xbox when they stole the entire show when it came to what Cyberpunk is. Yes, the PC version as well as the other versions of the game certainly have their bugs as well. It was definitely a buggy launch and have certainly had its issues as well. But I mainly played on PC and honestly like I can get through some of the vis visual glitches and some of the issues that would pop up because of what was there, the content of the experience of what I was playing and the story that's there is honestly really well done. But everybody was talking about the lower end consoles and how they just could not handle the game whatsoever and that misleading marketing. So all the news was all about that, giving everyone this very negative feeling when it came to Cyberpunk. Now don't get me wrong, Cyberpunk definitely should have been delayed a bit longer because of the way it launched was not exactly how a game should be, but I'm saying that it, so the focus was so much on the Xbox One and PS4 versions that they didn't really take time to look at actually what was there, but more just about the technical issues. Another game I feel like got a little too harsh of an initial launch was the game Mass Effect Andromeda. Yes, it's not as good as the original trilogy, but that's kind of impossible to really be since those three games are essentially masterpieces in RPG storytelling, and you have to create a whole new experience with Andromeda, it's tough to follow up with that. And yes, it certainly had its technical issues at launch as well, but those are relatively patched up rather fast. But since the negativity was so ingrained into the general public that everyone just thought Mass Effect Andromeda was a terrible game and Bioware dropped it pretty quick after they just put the initial patches out there. So like no DLC was even bothered with the game. Where if you go to any review nowadays saying Mass Effect Andromeda now or 2020 reviews, people go, actually, it's a pretty solid game. Not as good as the original trilogy, but certainly a fun game. Not as bad as people say it really is. That's because the news media really dwells on these negative articles because they generate more clicks and more views for their platforms. We're still seeing a general negative story being told about Halo Infinite, even when they don't even get the information correct. I mean, we saw the news media think that the delay was till 2022. Turns out it was April Fool's if they just took time, 10 seconds to actually read what they were doing. And also about the recent 343 developer that left 343, and he talked about his experience with Halo Infinite and what to expect from it. And they took him completely out of context because they didn't actually watch the video of him talking about his experience they read some guy's response uh, in a comment section but the general synopsis of what he was saying and so they didn't actually even bother to read it but they saw it was some more negative material that they could run with which would generate more clicks and more views 
So you can kind of see where I'm getting at where Halo Infinite really needs to lay down the foundations for an awesome campaign experience. And so then when the reviewers play it, they actually put out good reviews. They say things are working pretty well. And maybe the general public don't think so harsh on this game and maybe just leave it up to this random YouTubers to trash the game because they're going to be out there. I mean, I've seen people make videos saying Fortnite is dead on YouTube and obviously it's pretty well alive and kicking. But the campaign will give you your first impressions of the game, but the multiplayer will give you the long-term satisfaction, which we will cover in our next video about how the multiplayer will continue on the legacy of Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these analytical kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite or miss any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I'm going to link to all my news and informational videos. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.